Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Isabel Maria and today I'm going to answer the very important question of would I travel Serbia as a solo female traveler? Most of the time when I tell people that I live in Serbia, the first question they ask me is Siberia, isn't it really cold there? And on the off chance that they have heard of Serbia, the next question that they ask me is, well, isn't there a war going on there? And honestly, I get it because I too hadn't heard of Serbia until a few months before moving here. And I think that most of us, when we think Euro trip, think of either Spain or Italy or France, and Serbia tends to be kind of lower on the list of places to check out. But in the past few years, Serbia has actually really been blowing up. Now more than ever, when you walk through the big cities like Belgrade and Novi Sad, especially in the city center, you're gonna hear German, English, Russian, Spanish, a little bit of everything. And since Paris currently has a bed bug epidemic and Italy had flash floods all summer, if you're considering coming to Europe, you might wanna bump Serbia up to the top of your list. And if Serbia is already at the top of your list of places to visit, but Western media has been able to convince you that it's a really dangerous place that's full of terrorists and bombs and dangerous people, then I am here today to set the story straight. And throughout this video, I'll be sharing the experiences that I personally have had living in Belgrade, Serbia for the last two years. So I'll start by saying that a good way to describe Serbia is that it's anywhere from 10 to 20 years behind the rest of the world. Everything moves a little bit slower here and is just slightly behind. Everything from the goods that you can get here to the fashions that are trending, it just seems to be a little bit behind what you experience in the West. And obviously sometimes this can be annoying, but in a lot of ways I really love it because it actually reminds me a lot of what Canada was like when I was a kid and when I was growing up in the 90s. For example, it's super normal to see kids walking around here in like groups of kids with no adults, which is something that you almost never see in Canada anymore. I remember during the summer this past summer, I was out for an evening walk at maybe 7 p.m. and I saw a group of probably six boys aged anywhere from seven to 10 that were just walking down the street together. And one of them was on a bike, a couple of them had soccer balls, and one of them had like a huge stick that he was using as a walking stick. And they all had a piece of ice cream in their hand and they were just walking down the street talking shit. And I just remember looking at this and being like, this is just so wholesome and so normal. Later on that same night, I stopped into the grocery store and the person in front of me was a girl that was maybe nine years old. And she had dish detergent in one hand and like her little 500 dinar bill. And she was kind of fumbling with it and you could tell that it, she was super nervous. And I just remember being a little kid and like going to the grocery store to grab something for the family for the first time. And I don't know, it just brings me back to my childhood. And it's just like normal human things that you see in a society that is still healthy and that doesn't feel really dangerous and unsafe. During the summer, you'll see groups of parents just sitting in a park, hanging out with each other, like having food, drinking beer, relaxing while all of the kids play together until well after dark. And the parks aren't full of like tent cities of homeless people and there aren't like drug addicts and like drunk people just walking around like everything just feels so much more safe and there's also this really deep sense that everybody is looking out for each other i think that parents feel more comfortable sending their kids to do things on their own because they know that all of the adults that are out and about are actually looking after each other and if there was ever anybody like going up to a kid and trying to fuck with them i guarantee that there would be like a group of people around them taking care of that kid just immediately. Even one of my friends talked one day about how he was going for a walk down by the river and this really little kid, maybe four or five years old, was biking by and he fell off of his bike. And immediately there was a little babushka that ran over to him and like picked him up and dust off his clothes. And my friend went up to him and his chain had fallen off the bike. So he put the chain back on the bike and the babushka picked him up, put him on his bike and he just kept on riding, you know? Because people are just looking out for each other and there's just this deeper sense of friendliness and community, which is really interesting because I will say that it's this culmination of being a little bit more cutthroat. Like when you're getting on and off the bus, people will like shove you out of the way and Serbs can be a lot more tough. 
But then when it comes down to it, I do still think that there is that closeness and that community vibe that still exists here that you don't really see in Canada anymore. Even just this past summer, I was in the city center with my scooter and I wanted to ride from the city center to my place, which is probably like a 15 minute drive or like a 30 minute scooter. And it was midnight, it was well past dark. And in Canada, you literally couldn't pay me money to like walk around past 9 p.m. Even in my neighborhood, I was living in Vancouver and right before I moved here, there was actually this string of attacks where women were getting attacked anywhere from like 5 p.m., which is like broad daylight till 9 p.m. in my neighborhood. So I didn't feel comfortable really like walking around ever in my neighborhood. So needless to say, the idea of scootering home by myself in the dark was really scary, but I decided to go for it and was immediately so happy that I did because the entire bike path all the way home, even though it was midnight on, I'm pretty sure a random night, I don't even think it was the weekend, and it was just full of people. There was like a hundred people out walking with their dogs, people sitting on benches with their friends. The city was just still full of people. It's still alive and people aren't like cooped up in their houses watching TV. People are actually still like interacting with each other. So needless to say, I didn't feel nervous for a second. I rode all the way home and these are just a few small examples of kind of the vibe that is going on here. And the craziest part is that I was talking to a few of my friends before recording this video. In Serbia, there's a saying that the more south, the more sad, which is kind of the vibe for most southern European countries and just Europe in general. The more northern countries are a lot richer and then the further you go south, the more poor they are. And for a lot of southern countries, the more north you are in the country, the richer and then the more south you go, the more poor. And so since I haven't been to super south Serbia yet, I double checked with my friends and just asked them if southern Serbia is more sad and more poor, does that also mean that there's more crime there? And all of them without fail said by far the least safe place that you'll be in Serbia is Belgrade and that all of the smaller towns it's even more safe because it's just these close-knit little communities. So these are the interactions that I've had in what is considered the least safe part of Serbia so I feel like that's a really good sign. Another thing that I'll say is that I feel as though gender roles are also still more of a thing here and I do feel as though men still take on the role of protectors and guardians of women more and there's been small examples for that. I would say the place that I notice this the most is at the gym just because like I kind of go between my house and cafes and not really interacting with like a lot of men except my boyfriend on a day-to-day -day basis. But for example, another story time that I have for you guys is that I was at the gym recently and there was a group of probably six, maybe like 15, 16 year old teenage boys that were just about to leave. And since I got there first, I opened up the door for them and was holding the door and none of them would walk through the door. Literally one of them walked out took the door from me, waited to walk in, and then the rest of them walked out too. Like, they refused to walk through the door if it was a girl holding it. And obviously this is just one example that I can think of off the top of my head, but you can just feel this energy more. Like, when you're on the bus, people are always standing up for like, kids and babushkas and stuff like that. So, I feel like there's just more respect still inlaid in the society, if that makes sense. And then for me, the most poignant thing I think here is just the fact that there are essentially no homeless people. And coming from Vancouver where you're walking down the street and you'll literally see people like passed out on the ground, people shooting up in the middle of the street, especially now because they actually legalize drugs in Vancouver. So you can legally like shoot up and do drugs in the middle of the street and the police can't do anything to you. So just living in Vancouver where, yeah, you just see people drugged out and just out of their minds and like super sketchy all the time. And then coming here there are still gypsies that will come up to you on the street and there are still people that will come up to you and beg usually they're older or disabled but even those people like I know for a fact one of the women that I give money to often outside of the grocery store she's probably in her 80s and even though I'm English she's always trying to speak German to me it's so cute and from the small conversations that we've had she goes there and begs every day because she can't find work but she does have a home 
you know? So even the people who are more destitute aren't living in tents on the side of the road like animals or something. I know that similar to Vancouver, San Francisco has a crazy homeless epidemic and even in downtown there, you'll just see like tents up and down the streets. And I actually have a friend right now who lives in San Francisco and is here living and studying Serbian for a couple of months. And she also wants to move here. She absolutely loves it. And she's saying that there is this new thing in San Francisco where cars will drive up behind you and beside you and smash out your back windows of your car and steal all of your stuff. And they also recently changed the laws in California where you can't get arrested if you steal anything for less than $1,000. So there have been so many like big groups of people breaking into stores and stealing stuff recently, like crime is really on the rise there. So all of this is to say that whether you're male, female, solo, traveling with friends, whatever it is, I highly recommend coming to Serbia. I think it's so safe. The people can be I don't know, they're a combination of really nice and kind of hostile sometimes, but overall really friendly and good-hearted people. And if you're ever in need or something is going on, maybe the cashier at Maxi isn't gonna be super nice to you, but if you're ever lost on the street or something, there's no way that people would take advantage of you or be mean to you or not trying to help you as much as you can. And this is from my experience, I maybe haven't been to the total south of Serbia, but especially when you get into smaller towns in Serbia, people are so sweet and all they wanna do is just like feed you rakia and cold cuts and they're super lovely. So if you're thinking about coming here, I highly recommend that you put it to the top of your list, come check it out and I'm sure you're going to love it. Now that I'm thinking about it, the only place that I do feel a little bit sketchy in Belgrade is at the bus station. So if you're catching a bus into Belgrade or out of Belgrade, make sure that you're careful around there because there's always some kind of like sketchy individuals. So watch your bags, maybe don't go around there at night. That's the only part of the city that I try and avoid. So keep that in mind if you do decide to come. So that is it for today's video. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit the subscribe and like button. Leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys and I will talk to you next time.